Hi, Mr. Taylor again. Uh, putting together a good training tip for you. If you're working out at home, if you've got a bag, great. Uh, any bag will work, a water bag, a rev gear bag, or a, a real bag like this one will work. Or you can do these punches in the air either way. Uh, this is part two of our boxing punches. I'm going to go over two more punches in boxing, the hook and the uppercut, and then talk to you a little bit about how to train uh, with these boxing punches. Okay, The hook, probably the uh, uh, one of the more difficult punches to throw correctly in boxing. Uh, throwing off the front hand primarily into the side of the opponent's head or the side of the bag. Okay, Without the bag, if I'm facing you, I'm going to throw it with my lead arm. I'm going to lift my lead elbow up to plane my forearm out. And then I'm going to turn my body into the punch. Okay, That causes the, the twisting of my upper body causes the heel to spin. I like the analogy of slamming a door. You're going to take your chest, just like the broad side of a door, and swing it in this direction. You're trying to clip your opponent on the chin or the temple, the side of the head, with a hook. Um, you can throw the hook palm towards you, or you can throw the hook palm down. You see many boxers do it different ways. It's a preference thing. Some people in my study of boxing have suggested that throwing it palm down exposes the pinky knuckle a little bit. You know, heads are hard, man, even with an eight ounce boxing glove on. Might lead to more uh, hand injury. Where throwing it palm towards you lines the knuckles up and kind of makes them a little stronger. But your, uh, your hook, again, coming on the bag, just twist your body. Uh, get your distance right. You're probably going to be a little closer to the bag than you are with your jab of your right hand. But you're going to just twist your body, strike into the bag. Like I'm trying to uh, cup out a little section of the bag. Turn. And you don't want to pause like I did just there. In real sparring or boxing, you want to get it right back. Or throw another punch. You don't want to take a picture, so to speak. Uh, the, the, I will say this. On a beginner level, you don't want to throw a hook off the back home, okay? Because you kind of expose yourself when you do it. At a higher level, yes, that's okay. If you have your opponent on the ropes, you can kind of get away with some of that stuff, especially if he's hurt, if he's squared off, bang, you can kind of hook with that back arm. But it's not, I wouldn't start out doing that. Uh, fourth punch, our uppercut. In karate, we call it agetsuki, uh, rising punch, or uchiken inside strike. But it's uh, done, it can be done with either hand, and it's uh, a lot of the power in the uppercut comes from your legs, kind of bend your legs, lift into it. When you throw an uppercut, you want to take either hand that you're using and make your palm face you as you dig into the back. A uh, good punch when you're real close to someone. Uh, great way to set up a hook, by the way. But uh, uppercut. You go to the body or the head. Uppercuts. Okay. So those are your four basic boxing punches in a in a crash course: the jab, the cross, the hook, and the uppercut. Now, what do you do with them? Practice them in the air, sure, but you need one of these. You need a clock. And when I turn my clock on, when it makes this noise. That means go, and it's going to make another noise. That's going to mean I got 30 seconds left. Then it's going to make another noise. That means the round's over, a three-minute round. Then I'm going to get a minute break, three-minute round, minute break. My point is this. If you want to get anything out of the bag you've got at home, a lot of people I'll ask, do you, do you use your bag? Do you do bag work? Oh, yeah, I use my bag. And really what they do is every now and then they'll come over to it and they'll hit it five or six times and then they'll go, back in the kitchen and get a, get a drink, right? You, you gotta be systematic in the way that you do it. The way that I do it, now that I'm retired and I don't have to go eight or nine rounds, uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I do three rounds, three three-minute rounds on the back. It's part of my cardio workout on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday, I do a different workout, but you've gotta do it in an organized fashion, right? Three-minute rounds, if that bell bing goes, then I, Start putting together those four punches. Now, in both of these videos, I stood right here. So I didn't exercise my legs at all. 
If I'm going to go a three minute round on the bag, I'm going to circle the bag as I hit the bag, okay? You know, we didn't talk about a hook to the body or a hook to the head. You know, I can't teach you how to box in two short videos, but uh, the hook also can, you know, go to the body. But I want to put all those punches together while I circle the bag and use my legs a little bit. I want to practice going in both directions. You know, some people get in the habit of always going the same way. That's very predictable for your opponent. You want to get used to uh, being able to move and set up your punches in both directions. Okay? And releasing your punches in a manner that doesn't, that's smooth and fluid. Now, I'm sitting here talking to you. I'm not even thinking about what I'm doing with my punches. But I've thrown them so many times, I really don't have to think about it. And that's what you want to do if you want to get good at punching and boxing. Do it in a systematic manner. I would suggest maybe start out two minute rounds. Do two three minute rounds um, and then work up to three minute rounds. And these are nice, these clocks made by ringside boxing equipment. They're great, but you don't need one of those. You can use your, your iPhone, anything that'll give you a, a timer. Two minutes, one minute break, two minutes, one minute break, etc. All right, hope you enjoyed this video and uh, work on those punches.